move on to the uh, continued budget hearings of the Board of Supervisors. We appreciate those of you that have been waiting for this item. Uh, this is a item that we we're hoping to get to about 730, but this is a continued budget item. If we could have a roll call, please, to begin the continued budget hearings. Supervisor Leopold, Coonerty, here. Caput, here. McPherson, here. Chairperson Friend. Here. So we are all here. Uh, we'd also like to introduce uh, Carlos Landaberry, who is available for translation. Mr. Landaberry, if you could introduce yourself in case anybody needs your services. Un placer, a pleasure. Buenas noches para las personas que necesiten traducción al español. Estamos en el canal cero. Prende al aparato. Asegúrese que, la pantalla, que el aparato esté frente a la pantalla. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Okay, we'll open up uh, with the remarks from our County Administrative Officer, uh, Carlos Palacios. Mr. Palacios, good evening. Welcome. Uh, good evening. Uh, this week we have begun our county budget hearings for 2018-19 county budget. Uh, county department heads will present information during this entire week, Monday through Thursday, uh, information on the programs that they administer, and members of the public will address you about the impacts of the budget on a wide range of community needs. Uh, we believe our work to date represents a number of key successes that respond to your priorities as the Board of Supervisors and that this budget builds on that momentum. You will hear more about these successes as each department uh, presents their budget throughout this week. And again, budget hearings will be uh, from 9 o'clock till approximately noon uh, at the county budget office or county uh, chambers um, at 71 Ocean. And also, uh, we have all of the documents of the budget on uh, our website. When I began this job, I laid out a um, three-year um, plan. And the first part of that plan uh, was the strategic plan and to provide strategic direction for the county combined with fiscal stewardship and augmented services. The strategic plan has uh, three phases. Um, this year, uh, fiscal year 17, uh, 18, we are doing a six-year strategic plan, which will implement overall goals for the county. Uh, we presented that uh, strategic plan to the board uh, during the past year, we've had focus groups throughout the county uh, in each supervisor's district. Uh, we've also gone out to the community. We've gone to farmers markets, for example, and community groups to seek input. We also had a survey that was online where we had over um, 2,000 people respond with what they felt the priorities of the county should be. Uh, this will be adopted by the board next Tuesday um, during our final budget hearing. Phase two of our strategic plan will be to develop operational plans for our departments, which contain much more specific goals. These will be a two-year operational plan uh, that tie the strategic plan to our budget. Our budget will be also a two-year budget, and the link between the budget and the strategic plan goals will be these operational plans. So we'll be developing that in the next fiscal year. In addition, we are implementing an, an initiative called Continuous Process Improvement, uh, meant on improving uh, the services that the county offers to the public. Uh, finally, in fiscal year 1920, the third year of the work plan, we will begin uh, doing performance measures for our various county programs. In some departments, we are actually doing this already. For example, uh, our human services department, um, who I see seated, I see members uh, seated out in the audience, uh, some of our health services agency programs, and also our probation department uh, use performance measures extensively already. But we intend to do this countywide uh, throughout the county, and so we will be doing training during the next fiscal year and then implementing it in uh, 1920. In terms of fiscal stewardship, um, we have um, had a number of accomplishments. Um, number one, we've tripled our uh, reserves. Uh, right now, uh, we have achieved uh, the goal that the board set out for us in 2014 to triple our reserves to 
and the goal was to achieve this by 2021. And in fact, uh, we achieved it this year, last, actually last fiscal year. And so we were three years ahead of schedule, and uh, this has led to um, a number of good things, one of them being that our credit rating has improved. Um, S&P Global um, Ratings uh, last year in 2017 uh, upgraded our rating for bond and other debt issuances to AA+. Um, that's for a lease revenue um, debt is instrument. If we were to issue a GO bond, a gen general obligation bond, we would be rated AAA, which about, is about as high as you can get. And in their rating, uh, S&P Global Ratings noted that uh, Santa Cruz County has a very strong economy, that the county has a very strong management with very good financial policies and practices. We have had strong budgetary performance with a balanced operating budget. We have strong budgetary flexibility with a strong available fund balance, strong liquidity, and we also have very strong debt and liability positions with our debt service for all our current debt being under uh, less than 2% of all of our expenditures. So that um, points to the board's very conservative and prudent management of the county um, budget. Uh, we've also um, reduced our pension obligations. In 2007, uh, the board uh, took action with our labor partners uh, to negotiate a cafeteria plan and a cap on retiree health benefits. Uh, by doing this action in 2007, we reduced our unfunded liability for retiree health benefits by $35 million. In 2012, the county, um, with our uh, labor partners, implemented a health longevity schedule that links the level of benefit to years of county service and age at retirement. These reforms, again, that was implemented, were implemented by the board with our labor partners, reduced our unfunded liability for health benefits by $54 million. So um, these two actions alone uh, reduced our unfunded liability for retiree health benefits by $89 million. In addition, in 2012, uh, the county board with our labor partners implemented a second tier for our PERS retirement for all of our employee groups. This increased the retirement age of our, uh, for our employees, reduced the benefit formula, and increased employee participation. This was done to make sure that our retirement system was more sustainable. Uh, this action, uh, implementing a second tier reduced cost by over $93 million in terms of our unfunded liability. And then in 2013, uh, the state implemented um, a retirement reform as well at the state level, which also further reduced uh, the benefit formulas. So all of that taken together means that uh, we have reduced our um, pension uh, unfunded liabilities by a minimum of $180 million. And this, uh, again, is another sign of the board's prudent and very conservative fiscal stewardship um, that has resulted in our improved credit rating. We've also uh, controlled employee growth. In 2008, we had over 2,700 employees. Um, this is um, right before the recession. Um, Today, in this budget that we're presenting to you, we have 2,470 employees, uh, 235 less employees than before the Great Recession in 2007 and 8. That's a 9% reduction in our
that number of employees and continue to manage the county uh, despite the lack of employee growth. And then we've also uh, met some of our goals with deferred maintenance, although we continue to have significant challenges with regard to our facilities in that area. Uh, despite our very um, conservative and prudent fiscal management, um, we have been able to augment services. In particular, uh, we have implemented um, the Nurse Family Partnership, Thrive by Three, Whole Person Care, medi Drug Expansion. Uh, we've made a number of significant investments in public safety facilities. We have our new Roundtree and Blaine Street Correctional Facilities, the new Sobering Center, all reduced to all um, designed to reduce recidivism. Uh, we've also uh, increased the amount of funds we dedicated to homeless services. So despite uh, having a very tight budget, we have augmented our services significantly. Nevertheless, we have a lot of critical unmet needs. Uh, during the strategic planning process, we spent a year listening to the community, had many thousands of people from out throughout the county uh, participate, and we heard um, strongly that there's still a great need to provide more behavioral health um, services, more substance use disorder services. We have uh, critical needs for more parks and more recreation services. We have a lot of unmet needs in our deferred maintenance of our parks. And in addition, we have deferred maintenance um, throughout our county facilities. And of course, in our roads and transportation network, we have a significant um, maintenance issue. And in addition to the storm damage repair we're doing, we have a lot of catch up we have to do in terms of our ability to keep our transportation network. Going now into the budget, um, our budget is, is very big. Overall, it's um, three quarters of a billion dollars, so $777 million. Our general fund is, um, um, is more than half a billion dollars, for $519 million. And again, we have 2,470 em employee positions. Uh, we continue to see um, steady, if not spectacular, growth in our tax revenues, in particular led by our um, property tax and hotel tax. This is our property tax, which represents our most important revenue for the county by far. And you can see that it has grown steadily over the last decade. Sales tax has stagnated, which is something that's new given that we're in an economic expansion. Um, part of this is due to online shopping. Part of it is due to people spending more money on experiences rather than things. There's lots going on there. It's being seen uh, statewide that sales tax revenues are stagnating. Uh, however, our hotel tax continues to grow um, at a healthy rate, partly due to our agreement with Airbnb and, and bringing vacation home rentals uh, into paying their hotel tax. Uh, you can see when you look at our overall budget that 40% uh, of it is on health and human services. You can see that when you look at our revenue sources for our overall budget, that almost half of it is under governmental, which means federal and state money. Um, tax revenue is only 25% of our budget. This is very different from a city, for example, where taxes would represent almost all of the budget. These are expenditures by category. Again, um, health and human services taking a big portion of that. Most of our expenditures are for our employees, which provide services to the community. We also contract, however, significantly with a number of uh, private contractors and nonprofits. Our general fund, $514 million. Um, more than, if you look just at our general fund, more than half of it is health and human services. These are expenditures uh, in our general fund. If you look at just expenditures, 60% is health and human services. A quarter is public safety. 
This is our net county cost. Uh, this is uh, our general purpose revenues. So if, if the county were a city, uh, this would be the most comparable thing. Um, and you can see it's about $146 million. This is our discretionary revenue that we get mostly from taxes. And so that $146 million, as you can see, funds 55% of it uh, public safety. Uh, the county is, in fact, the largest city in the county. Half of the population in our county uh, resides in the unincorporated area which is unusual. Just to give you the example of Santa Clara County, Santa Clara County, only 5% uh, of the population lives in the unincorporated area. 95% of the population in Santa Clara lives in cities. So city of Santa Clara, Palo Alto, uh, San Jose, all those cities, uh, Gilroy, all of Santa Clara, 95% live in cities. In our, in our county, um, only half of the population lives in cities. The other half lives in the county. And so there's about 140,000 people that depend on the county to provide municipal services. And this is the amount of money, $146,000, that we have to provide municipal services. And so um, it's quite a challenge. And you can see that most of it is devoted to uh, public safety. Um, this is our general fund uh, use of fund balance. And you can see that. Uh, fund balance, which is the savings we have from any particular year, we carry it over to the next year. You can see that we've reduced the reliance of that from $8 million two years ago to about $5.3 million in the budget year. In terms of our budget, uh, looking at the changes, you'll see that the biggest, if you can look at the public safety uh, category there in terms of expenditures, uh, growing by almost $8.5 million. So the biggest growth is in public safety, which is actually very typical of a city. Most cities are seeing most of their growth in, in, in public safety, fire and police. Uh, we also have, of course, our correctional facilities. Um, also note our debt service, which is only um, $4.9 million, uh, less than 2% of our expenditures as a total uh, general fund budget, which is very low and it's a very uh, healthy, healthy number. These are our reserves, and you can see that they've grown steadily uh, since the board gave us direction to increase the reserves, uh, now over $50 million. Uh, this is the county staffing, um, 2,400 positions, and you can see that most are in health and human services. Uh, to summarize, um, next year, we will be developing our operational plans and two-year budget. We will continue to implement our continuous process improvement initiatives and pilot projects. Um, we are um, attempting to continue to have fiscal restraint. Uh, however, the challenge before the board is that there's some critical unmet needs that the community has, communi has told us very strongly that they would like us to try and meet as we went through the strategic planning process. And so that will be the challenge of this budget hearings, and that will be the challenge before the board, is uh, how, with the very um, limited budget flexibility, how do we meet some of the critical and meet unmet needs that the community has identified over the last year. That concludes my presentation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Palacios. This morning, uh, the board did ask some questions, so we're just going to open this straight up for the community since people have been waiting uh, for the opportunity. This is an opportunity for members of the community to address us on uh, the budget. There's no action taken tonight on it, but this is an opportunity for you to provide input on the budget. Anybody would like to speak, please feel free to step forward. Good evening. Welcome back. Good evening, Board of Supervisors. I'm Maria Elena de la Garza with the Community Action Board of Santa Cruz County, and I always like to start your once a year visit with a welcome to Watsonville. It is always a pleasure to have you here, and thank you for coming out. Um, today, I want to talk about two things. Um, number one, you're going to hear from various leaders from our departments at the Community Action Board to discuss the first year of core impacts and what that meant for our agency and what that meant for our clients. And so you're going to hear th that a little bit about that today and a little bit about that tomorrow um, through the 
through this open process. Um, but I also would like to introduce to you um, uh, and give you some information around our newest initiative called the Thriving Immigrants Initiative. And we've been talking about it for a couple of years now, um, and, and, and there's been some movement in that area. And the Thriving Immigrants uh, Initiative exists um, as a separate arm to the Santa Cruz County Immigration Services. Skip has been around for 20 years. We all know and love Doug Keegan, who has le uh, uh, led that, that initiative for, for over 20 years. Um, and the Thriving Immigrants work is in conjunction to the SKIP services. And the difference is SKIP exists for people who have a remedy, that there's, a, there's, there's something that they can do, can apply for, can, 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 can move so that they get closer to their goals of citizenship or, or authorization, right? There's a remedy for them. The Thriving Immigrants Initiative is for people with no remedy. And as you know, in our community, there are thousands of folks who are undocumented immigrants who need support now more than ever. I invite you to watch KSBW tonight. They did a small snippet uh, on our, our services. But what it's important to know is what's happening out in the community. You've heard it. You've heard it from your constituents. You've heard it from service providers. You've heard it from your staff um, about what is how the community is responding to this political landscape. And so the Thriving Immigrants Initiative, what it is doing, it is creating a response plan to support those families without remedy. It's helping to address fears. It's helping to create a clear message that's consistent so that people are not being taken advantage of by notario publicos or by immigrant um, legal lawyers who are charging uh, crazy fees for their services. Um, and it's also bringing together a partnership, specifically here in South, in South County, of partners who are helping to address the issue, like PVPSA, like YWCA, like Salud para la Gente, like Community Ventures, and like Catholic Charities and the Watsonville Law Center. So it's bringing us together. The Packard Foundation gave us some seed money for these services, but we're just beginning the work. And what's critical about it is, is you know, people are saying, look what's happening happening at the border and it's intense and it's very difficult to watch. But we also need to ask the question, what is happening to the families here? Because similar things are happening in terms of families being separated and services being needed for those families. Um, and so I ask you to think about supporting our Thriving Immigrants Initiative. We, we requested some set-aside funding. There's a, there's a recommendation to support some of that funding. And we're asking for full funding and also to help us think about how do we work with the county to strategize what is the next level of services Thank beyond you. Sanctuary City. So we need Thank we you. have a lot of work to do. Thank, Thank you. you. And we did receive that request in the letters. Hi, my name Evening. is Elizabeth Lopez, and I represent um, Community Action Board of Santa Cruz County Immigration Project and Thriving Immigrants Collaborative. And tonight I'm here to share with you guys what we're doing at Community Action Board. And we are actually responding to those families who have been, who have been impacted by a deportation we are responding to those individuals who are detained, and we are also responding to those people who come very anxious, very nervous, and scared when they get those letters um, to appear in court. And we also respond by supporting them and connecting them with an attorney that has a capacity to represent in court, and also by connecting them with emotional support services as well with community resources within our agency and outside our agency. And we ask for your support to continue to do this great job because the community needs this service to continue. And I'm gon going to share with you a little, um, some positive words from a client who is very happy. And she says, this program lifted this big dark cloud that was around me. They gave me information that I didn't know, and I am able to sleep now. I am not scared anymore. I thank God every day for the people in this program that took um, the time helping me and helping others, and I was assisted with emotional and financial aid. I feel like a new person thanks to them. Thank you for listening. Thank you for coming tonight. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening. My name is Maria Rodriguez. Um, and first of all, thank you so much for your leadership and vision and supporting programs to improve the lives of immigrant families in our county. 
Uh, and I am the program, employment program specialist for the uh, day worker center. It's under the, the it's under the community action board. The day worker center provides safe space for day workers to access job matches and secure dignified wages for men and women, and also uh, provides family supportive services. As a response of the political landscape this year, we have teamed up with CAF's Thriving Immigrants Collaborative, and with the support of the county set aside funds, we have provided critical, important, and educational and supportive services for our immigrant families. Uh, some of our highlights for this year at the Day Worker Center that you you know that you have helped us you know to be able to uh, come across this past uh, months to be able to accomplish. We have uh, since July we have completed 30 child uh, child safety plans to support those at risk of deportation. We have also been offering weekly ESL classes and immigration educational workshops, job readiness skills workshops, and know your rights workshops, and offering leadership skills to day workers. In May, uh, we, uh, we have reported uh, 16, 61 registered day workers who generate $29,000 on job matches. Your maximum continued support for the set aside fund will ensure that we continue to support families navigate the process of finding legal representation, accessing needed services, and exercising their rights. On behalf of the day workers, I would like to urge you to support the full amount of funding that we requested from the fund, from the set aside fund to continue to support the families in our communities and children. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Javier Rodriguez, and I am representing the Day Worker Center. Uh, and thank you for your service. I'm here to be in an example in what to feels like to be a day worker, and where I found a place where I can uh, provide for my family and provide for others because about my leadership. So I'm just I'm representing the whole county of the day workers, which there is a lot of difference between staying, looking for work at the corners and the street and have a place where I can find uh, a job and a roof and uh, leadership skills. So there is a lot of different, and all this is probably taking most of the immigrants like to go to the day worker center because they can find a home. And I urge you and I um, to ask you to if you can keep funding this service because this is really making a difference in the county. Thank you. Thank you. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Hermelinda Vázquez. Yo soy una emigrante y jornalera que recibe servicio del centro. En este tiempo, con el clima político que tenemos, necesitamos más que nunca un centro como el Centro Jornalero, que nos apoya a los emigrantes. Como mujer, en este centro me ha dado me ha dado la, oportun la oportunidad de buscar trabajo en una manera segura. Para esto necesitamos los fondos que hemos pedido y les pido por favor que nos apoyen para que este centro siga adelante. Es todo, gracias. Gracias. Ms. Landaberry. Good evening. My name is Hermelinda Vasquez. I am a day labor center worker. I receive services there. Now with our political climate, we need more than ever our day labor center. They support us, immigrants. As a woman, this center has given me the opportunity to look for work in a safe way. But to do this, we need the funds that we have requested from you. So I want to ask you to please support us so that the day labor center continues. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. 
Buenas noches, mi nombre es Víctor Sosa, and soy un inmigrante que pertenezco al Centro Jornalero de Santa Cruz. Quiero decirles gracias por el soporte que han dado al Centro Jornalero y a la organización que nos patrocina. Um, también quiero decir que es muy importante tener este centro abierto, um, ya que pues es un un lugar accesible para toda la comunidad, a donde podemos conocernos todas las razas, no importa el color, es un lugar seguro, a donde podemos um, expresarnos y buscar un lugar seguro para trabajar y también me he dado cuenta que uh, cuánto es de importante tener este centro, ya que he salido a trabajar por medio del centro y he encontrado empleadores que realmente necesitan de personas como nosotros. También me ha ayudado a, a desarrollar un liderazgo en la comunidad. Um, participo en otras áreas de la comunidad. Soy un inmigrante y quiero ser así para um, enseñar a las personas que podemos ser mejores personas siempre y cuando tenemos una oportunidad y un lugar como este. Uh, ojalá que puedan seguir apoyándonos y gracias por todo el apoyo que han dado y es todo, muchas gracias. Good evening, my name is Victor Sosa. I am an immigrant, I am part of the Day Labor Center in Santa Cruz. I want to thank you for all the support that you have provided our center, the organization that gives us all of these benefits. I also want to tell you that it is very important to maintain this center open. It is a very accessible place to the entire community where we can get to know each other, people from different races, different colors, different place, different backgrounds. This is a safe place where we can express ourselves, where we can find a safe job. I have also noticed how important it is to, or for us to have the center. I have, I have found employment and I have talked to employers and I can see that they really need people with skills like us. I've been able to develop leadership skills in the community. I have helped and I also participate. I volunteer in different areas of the community. I am an immigrant and I want to do it this way because I want to teach people, I want to show them what we can do as an immigrants if we are given the opportunity. So I hope that you can continue supporting us. I want to thank you for all the support you have given us and for all the support that is coming. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Keegan. Welcome. Uh, Doug Keegan, uh, the director of the Santa Cruz County Immigration Project, a program of the Community Action Board. I wanted to bring up that this year has been a very challenging one for immigrants in our county, but it is gratifying to see the county affirming their commitment to the well-being and security of immigrants in Santa Cruz County. The Community Action Board has found critical support and collaboration from the Department of Human Services, from the Sheriff's Department, and in fact from you elected officials as well who have given your time and have, have appeared at the events that we have held throughout the county, and we appreciate it. I, I also am compelled to say that there are many challenges ahead um, we know that ICE actions and raids will continue in our neighborhoods and workplaces. We know that California is a target. We see that the administration plans to expand the grounds of public charge to deny people who are applying for residency. And Already, we see frightened families, many of whom are parents with U.S. citizen children, declining the assistance that they need from the county um, or disenrolling, discontinuing the benefits that they've been receiving, such as CalFresh 
and Medi-Cal. So we know that this is going to have a huge impact, but uh, we look forward to continuing to work with the county in opposing these very malevolent actions that we see in our, in our county. We also hope to expand the immigration project located here in Watsonville by creating, in a sense, satellites at the Day Worker Center and at the Davenport Resource Center so that the transportation and proximity won't prevent people from getting the services they need. So those are some of the things that we're uh, looking forward to in working with the county in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you for your work, Mr. Keegan, you. truly. Good evening, welcome, thank you for waiting. Good evening to all of you. Um, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to come by and thank you to thank you all. Um, we greatly appreciate um, all the help that uh, the county offers. And through CORE, I'd like to tell, share with you how that has benefited 35 families that we've been able to assist um, from becoming evicted and homeless. Um, thanks to the funding in North Mid County, we've been able to assist families like there's this, um, a senior couple who due to medical emergencies was unable um, to keep up with their rent and with such a limited income um, were at um, pardon me <laughs> uh, being so nervous um, being bef before you but I go back to thanking you and being able to give them the peace and and calmness to be able to um, focus again on catching up with the rent filling that gap with that rent um, because of the limited funding they were able to pay it but not to catch up after um, falling behind as um, a, a, a widow of two children and um, with the recent passing of her um, spouse um, during bereavement, also um, lost track of, of um, all the other things that mattered that you can imagine. Um, but through the assistance of um, the funding that you um, have provided, um, we were able to assist her to f get back on her feet and focus and not on this downward spiral, but actually um, getting back to her job and providing um, the security for her children um, due to that. As you can imagine, what a, what a difficult time. But thanks to her bereavement counselor that referred her to us, we were able to assist. I want to thank you once again, um, sincerely. You know, the, you can imagine the amount of stories we had to share, but um, a positive note, I think, um, expresses our gratitude even more. Thank you, and you all have a great evening. Thank you, and I know you've been before us before, but if you could share your name for the record again, that'd be great. That's where I should have began, huh? That's okay. <laughs> I have, yeah, but I, this, is, this never gets easy. My name is Lourdes Arellano Perez, and I am the coordinator for the Rental Assistance Program through yes. Community Action Board. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for your work. Good evening, thank you for waiting. Good evening, uh, my name is Juan Luis Romero, and I'm the Assistant Program Director for Alcance uh, under the Community Action Board. Um, and thanks, thanks to your uh, core funding for this first year, uh, we were able to support our efforts on violence prevention uh, for youth. We were able to create a street outreach program uh, that supports, uh, that's going to be supporting 40 youth and being able to navigate uh, different systems like the judicial system or the academic system and help them, help them just to better themselves and, and stay, out, stay away from violence, right? And so... With our programs, we've been able to to provide that support. We've been able to have mentors uh, to work with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis, being able to take them to different places, ex uh, different exposure like uh, uh, colleges. We've been out, able to take them out to CSUMB, being able to take them out to San Jose State. Uh, we've also uh, provided a different opportunity as far as like Job Corp and being able to, to assist them with those pieces. Um, thanks to the, the funding as well, we've been able to, to support youth and being able to get their licenses, getting IDs to be able to get employed and so we've been um, uh, providing services for, for about 40 youth. And we also have uh, created a, a, a program, a curriculum called uh, Joven Noble, which is an evidence-based program that has supported the 17, 17 youth to go through a 10-week curriculum 
uh, where if they've uh, learned from leadership to being able to understand themselves and being able to support uh, their families and being able to move from from uh, being a youth into uh, adulthood. And so uh, we just like to uh, thank you for, for being able to fund us through this. And we also like to take an advance for approving the local innovation uh, trust fund. So thank you very much. Thank you and thank you for your work. Anybody else like to address us just during the public comment period? <coughs> Good evening and welcome back. Good evening, Steve Trujillo, per personal commissioner for the city and resident of Watsonville and Pajaro Village. Um, first of all, I'd like to address the SB gas tax funds. There is a ballot initiative in November that may very well pass. Um, if it does, we're going to lose 12 cents a gallon. 25% um, of the budget may be taxes, but we all drive on the roads, and frankly, in South County, the roads in the unincorporated areas are third world. I know I drive them every day. And that affects anyone on a bicycle, a motor scooter, a bike, uh, on a bus. You feel every dip, every crevice. So I'm hoping the county is going to come up with a plan that if that is repealed uh, in the in ballot initiative in November, um, what happens to those projects in order to redo the roads? And then we also have to remember that there will also be a ballot initiative concerning rent control. It may be a bit draconian for many owners. So we need to address the fact that we don't have, to put it mildly, anywhere near enough low and moderate income housing for people, especially people who work here, who are working two jobs and more, sometimes more than, more than two, and who can't even afford rent. The recent survey that said that people who are making uh, $12.50 an hour, working 40 hours a week, can't afford a two-bedroom apartment any community in America. That's how bad this is, folks. We need to really address tiny homes, tiny houses that Sacramento's doing. And we also, by the way, a good place to start would be Freedom Boulevard. We had lots of pu empty parking lots there. Uh, and also buildings that are older that have vacant second and third stories like Main Street, downtown Watsonville, converting them with the owners to usable, low-cost housing. We have to think, be creative and think out of the box, and I'm sure all five of you uh, recognize the problem because it's not going away. The homeless live right behind me in the raspberry field where I live on Bronte Avenue, and I hear them every morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else like to address us during the public comment on the budget? Okay, uh, seeing none, it's a non-action item. Uh, the Board of Supervisors will meet again tomorrow morning in Santa Cruz and also take public testimony again tomorrow evening uh, regarding the budget. And we appreciate you staying up late with us tonight and coming here to Watsonville for those that aren't from Watsonville and also appreciate the board coming down. We'll see you in the morning. <laughs>